What's up, guys? It's your girl, Matt Cox, with M.A. Couture Crafting, and I am so excited to be finally getting you guys this video. And you guys are like, finally, what? So, let's rewind and go back to January. In January, I'm hanging out at Road to California, which is a quilt show out here. I'm pretty sure that I did some videos with it. Got a chance to meet some of the Soya family live and in person. Totally hit it off. Clicked. And they've been so kind to me. They're like the only company that even talks to me. So, <laughs> so I really love them so much. They're the only ones that acknowledge me and my five subscribers. Like they are here for it. And so I'm talking to Tiankum and he's like, you know what? We were having a conversation about my, my HD9 and my video and all that. And he was like, what? He's like, eh, I'm going to send you a sewing machine. I want you to test it. I was like, you want me to test it? Me? What? I've got five subscribers. Are you sure? He's like, yes, yes. I want you to do it. Do a video. Tell me your true thoughts. Oh my gosh. I almost lost it there <laughs> in the, in the, in the streets of the, the, the road to California. Like I almost just lost it. I was so excited. Now I have a video already on my channel about my comparison between the TL Juki 20, whatever it is. I don't know. And you guys have really watched that video. You have really taken into consideration what I've said, and you guys have trusted me. I want this channel to be a channel of integrity, and I want to come at you with great stuff, great notions, great quilting ideas. I don't want you guys to be like, ah, she's just selling stuff and da-da-da-da-da. I don't want that to be this here. So I thought about the beauty industry. And all the beauty gurus who try on a lipstick and say, oh my gosh, I love it. I'm like, dude, you just put it on. Can you walk around the house with it for a little bit? Can you wear it a little bit? How about you test it for a week? <laughs> you know, give me, give me a little something. So I was like, what do I want to do? How would I approach this? I'm like, all right, I'm going to make five quilts and a bag. I'm going to make five quilts and a bag. I wasn't exactly sure how long that was going to take me. And honestly, I probably made double that because I move kind of fast when it comes to sewing, and these are fast machines. I have traveled with this machine. I have taken it all over the place. And we're talking about the QVP TL18. That is the machine that I was sent. That is the machine that I was going to test. And I wanted to test it. I didn't want to just come to you guys and say, oh, my gosh, it's so great. It's amazing. I love it after opening the box. That's not me. That's not what we're doing here. We're going to run a machine. We're going to run that sucker. And that's why I told Bianca. I was like, I'm going to run it. I'm really going to test it. He's like, what, whatever, do your thing. I'm like, okay. So this is me doing my thing. You guys, I don't like that machine. <laughs> that machine is not for me. And I have a list of reasons as to why. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into my sewing room. We are going to look at the machine side by side. And I am going to tell you everything that I don't like about this machine. Full transparency, that machine is a beautiful machine. It sews beautifully. It has beautiful stitches. It is a great buy for somebody. Not for me. <laughs> Jukies are some of the most popular machines that you will see. If you go to any kind of classes, if you go to any kind of convention, you're going to see a gazillion of them. They are popular. They are out there. People love them. No. Mm -mm. I tried. I ran that sucker for three months hard. I made all the things with it. I can't wait to tell you guys the things that I don't like about it. Many of you, that sounds bad, but many of you will think that it's petty because some of it will seem petty to you. Like, what? That's totally not a big deal. Some of the things that I don't like about the machine will be selling points for you. You'll be like, absolutely, that's why I want it. <sighs> the machine is a beautiful machine. The Juki QVP TL18 is a beautiful machine, but it is not for your girl, so I'm sending it right back. Or, you know, we'll see. Everybody that I know that knows that I have it wants the machine. So we'll see what we're going to do with that machine because everybody wants it. I don't want it. I'm giving it back deal was if I like it I keep it if not just send it back I'm giving it back guys can you imagine 
All right, let's go ahead and get to my sewing room so I can show you guys. The sewing room is actually, by the way, whatever. So I can show you guys what the differences are in these two machines so that you can make the best decision for you because you're going to want a straight stitch machine. You're totally going to want one, especially after I talk about it. All right, guys, I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, here they are side by side. This is how my main machine stays set up all the time. This comes to my belly button. So yes, guys, I stand, I sew standing up, which is going to be a major issue for me as we get down in the line. When I really start explaining the things that I like versus the things that I don't like. And don't get me wrong, this machine, like I said before, is a beautiful machine. And it has some features that I prefer over the HD9. So to thread the machines, they're pretty much... They're similar. They are not the exact same. This one has a spring lever. This one doesn't. You know, you're going to... Well, actually, I guess it does. Actually, I take that back. But it moves a little differently than this one. This one here, you're just going to come down and come up. Once you push that one down, you can rotate it. I really... The, the reason why I prefer this one over this one is due to me having long nails. And most people do not have ridiculously long nails. So... The way that this one comes over is a little bit easier for me to thread with my nails, but that's, you know, a wash. That really is just because of me, who I am. Um, the way that this one threads is very similar to the way that this one threads, but it's not the same. I actually prefer these three loops right here to face this way. I like that I have a heavy thread path here, which I use a lot. I use this a lot because I'm always running heavier threads. However, sometimes, every now and then, my thread gets stuck over on that screw, and then I get what? <laughs> Screwed. <laughs> so, um, that's something. You know, it's, it's something. They have this right here, which is going to be a game changer for many people, and what this does right here is when you untwist it, it allows your foot to lift just a little bit with the needle still down, so that if you're sewing like half square triangles or something like that, you can rotate your fabric without having to, you know, reset it. You just click, turn it to the side, and that is a really cool feature of this machine here. The um, bobbin, love this. I hate to change bobbins, mostly because I hate to unthread my machine. You know, you like to have some pre-round bobbins. You don't have to worry about that here. This one has its own motor for the bobbin, which I absolutely love. Um, the bobbin winder works really well. The bobbin winder here is fine too, but you have to use your pedal to get it going. The reverse on this is hard. It's not hard like you can't do it. It's just harder than that one is over there. I prefer that reverse lever. Um, it's bigger. Again, guys, I have big, I have long nails. It's a larger button. It's just, I prefer the HD9. The thread cutter, my thread cutter, if you have a baby sleeping in the house, the HD9 will absolutely wake up the baby. I don't know why it has to sound like a gunshot went off, but it is super duper 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 loud. With the HD9, you can control the needle down or if you want it to finish in the needle up. With this button here, I don't believe you can do that here. You can push it up and down, but this one you can finish with it in the up position. The one thing that is a huge, like a big, big, big deal in my opinion, is your tension. Um, your tension right here. The HD9. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna just go in for the for the kill. Hold on one second. Let's go in and look. So if you see this one here, you're trying to kind of figure out when you're doing the tension where to put it with just that white line right there. And this mine has like, it's not smooth all the way around. Now look at this. This one has that blue line, which is perfect. You know what you're doing. You know where you're setting your tension. You guys. I don't know why on earth 
because setting your tension is what this machine kind of is all about. If you're jumping from leather straps back to your cotton, and you need to be able to set it. You need to be able to set it consistently. You need to know what your settings are. And this one here is just better. I prefer it, even though it has this little guy here. And no, 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 and no. Juki murders the HD9 when it comes to that. This tension right here, oh, yep. I was falling in love with that because I was, of course, playing with tension because I sew through all the things. So this is a much, 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 much better setup. So you have your stitch length here, which is on the front. Click, click, click. The HD9 is there's a wheel over there to the right. No big deal. That's pretty much a wash. The crank on this one is ginormous. The crank on that one is a little bit smaller. It's a wash, no big deal either way. The throat area here is a little bit larger on the HD9. You can see that the HD9 is a little bit larger than the Juki. I do want to point out that I always sew with a Martelli pad underneath my sewing. That has made such a difference in the amount of vibration that I get on my table. If I am going out to travel with somebody, if I'm going out to sew with people, have this. It just reduces so much of the um, of the shaking. I also have one of those Martelli pads underneath my foot pedal, and that makes a huge difference, guys. So if you haven't done so already, run out and get this pad and put it underneath your sewing machine. At one point, I sew so fast and hard on this metal table that my sewing machine would be moving all over the place. Um, you can combat that by using some contact paper, too. But, you know, just... The Martelli thing is absolutely worth it. It really does absorb a lot of that shock. Right here is where you can raise or drop the feed dogs. Um, that's nice. You know, if you need to do that when you are doing your free motion, it's nice and convenient there. The bobbin. Mine is bigger, period. That's a big deal for me. I love having a jumbo bobbin in this HD9. That is one of the things that sold me on the machine, I don't have to change the bobbin as much. Jumbo bobbins for the win, for sure. The thread cutter on here is nice and quiet. We talked about that already. Two of the largest complaints that I have with this machine, where it just is almost 100% a deal breaker for me, which you guys might think is petty. Why on earth would you send me stuff like this? Like, where's the box? I'm just kidding. That's not the biggest deal breaker. I don't love this. This is how the Juki stuff came in this little box. And the Janome stuff came, I should say in that little bag, and the Janome stuff came in a cute box that makes sense. Um, don't, don't give me all my feet like that, Juki. Like, that's just not nice. But the biggest, biggest thing for me, and I wish I could show you guys, however, it is super daylight and morning time here so I won't be able to show you but the lighting on here is a joke I already wear glasses I do not see well what are you lighting with this what the lighting is an absolute joke I, I just come on like we can do better than that in a dark room with all the lights off I still probably wouldn't be able to see that great with the Juki the HD9 however oh my goodness it it lights up <laughs> you're lit. Now, they sell those lighting strips, but I don't want to add. I don't want to have to add. I don't want to add a, anything to my machine in that regard. I don't want to. And I know that they have them, and those lights are so bright, and they are game changers. And they will make sure that you don't have any shadows and whatnot, but this machine here, I don't even have to worry about that. And the biggest issue that I have with this machine and why I don't want it and why I really don't want, actually, I would take a Juki Industrial. But other than that, no. It's this right here. This idea is excellent in theory. What? We need to cut thread? Yes. Let's put a thread cutter on the back of this. It's, it's, it seems like it would be genius, right? However, everybody I know hits it. Everybody. Everybody I know has hit it, has been shocked by it, and they don't like it. <laughs> nobody, nobody likes it. Very few people like it.
So of course they have this stopper underneath. So okay, you don't have to hit it. However, I am big enough and I'm sewing on a, a plush carpet that if I stand on it, I can smash that easily. And I sew standing up. My second issue is that because I stand sewing up, because I, I sew standing up, I need to be able to have my heel on the ground. When my foot is hovering over this machine, over the pedal, because you can't put any pressure on it, otherwise you're going to go, I have all of my pressure on my left leg. This is super uncomfortable, even sitting down. I sat and sewed with this, um, and it was so uncomfortable because you have your foot just hovering up like three inches. Like, what, why, why would you do that? That's not comfortable. I love how this one allows me to have my heel on the ground, and it slopes up. Love it. It's genius, and also, I have the M7. They have a thread cutter on their pedal, but it's actually on the side. You can move it to either side, and that is genius. This pedal is an absolute no-no. It had my hip. I was like, why is my hip hurting? I mean, I know I'm getting older, but what's going on? It was because I was I sew a lot, and my leg was just hovering up above the pedal, and I don't like it. And I, <laughs> I do not like it, and also... I'm a weirdo. I sew with shoes on. I don't know anybody else who does that. I always keep my shoes on when I sew. So feeling it and all that kind of stuff, no, no, no. This is the world's worst pedal in my personal opinion. And like I told you guys, I took this and I went to, you know, friends' houses and sew dates and all that kind of stuff. This handle, why would you put a handle off to the center? How am I supposed to... What? It's just not distributing the weight evenly and these are pretty heavy machines the hd9 is absolutely heavier but the handle for the hd9 is right here dead center and you can actually pick your machine up like that when you try to pick your machine up with this you definitely need another hand because it's sliding backward because the handle is in it and not smart and this is just i don't i don't love this handle okay guys these are the reasons why i am keeping my hd9 and I am sending the Juki back to where it came from. Again, this is a beautiful machine. And a lot of the things that I don't love about it are probably considered petty. Also, this right here, it depends upon who you are and how you like to thread. However, for this one, when you're threading it, you just pull the thread up and through here. This one, you actually, it goes through. So you cannot just floss it here and I thought I liked that until you start using Monopoly and it tries to unwind and it comes out and you're like oh shoot so I actually prefer putting it through the loop right there with your top lever and the heaviest weight thread that I sewed on was 12 weight and it sewed beautifully on here you can you can do a 12 weight you do need to adjust your tension but it's possible the heaviest that I've sewn on here is pearl cotton I don't know if I just wouldn't be disrespectful to this machine. I, you know, I, I knew that I didn't love it. I knew that somebody else would probably be getting it. So I didn't want to break this machine by putting pearl cotton in there. Not that it would. I just absolutely did not test it. The thickest materi materials that I sent through here um, were four layers of webbing. I stacked four layers of webbing. If you can get it underneath the needle, it will sew. However, the HD9... Power, way more powerful. I don't know why that is. I don't know anything about these engines um, that are in here. I don't know about the machinery in that sense. I just don't know. But what I do know is this one is stronger. It, I, when I sewed that bag, this one pulled it through in a way different way than the Juki. The Juki can handle it. You guys, you can definitely buy any your life away with these Jukis for sure. But the HG9, stronger. It's, it's definitely stronger. And at high speed, when I have pedal to the metal and I'm going flat out, the HC9 is smoother. If it's not flat out, the Juki is smoother. So, you guys, you just got to kind of pick and choose. But that is my review on these machines. This is why I actually prefer the HD9 for my personal preference. 99% of it is this pedal. It's bigger. It's brighter. Um, and it's stronger. That's all I can say. 
I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you, thank you, thank you to So Yeah, who actually allowed me to test this machine and give my opinion on it. If you guys are in the market for either machine, either one, please tell So Yeah that I sent you. I don't know that you're going to get a better deal anyplace else. Probably not. They are not typical salespeople over it. So yeah, they do things a little differently, and I like them. I support that store. They are awesome. Call them up and say, hey, we saw the video. I want an HD9. Um, or you want the Juki. People love this machine. And maybe something that I said is more for you than for me. And so... Again, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Let's see what all comes with this. This here is the quarter-inch presser foot. Um, it's cool quarter inch presser foot this is the one that looks like this the compensating foot is currently on my machine um, which I'm probably going to leave on there this is the presser foot that came on the machine A ton of feet come with this machine this is the oh the quilt bar the quilting bar to keep your space even what is this? This is some oil. We've got some bobbins. We've got a walking foot, a nice heavy walking foot. The thread cap. Some more feet. You have a, what is this? This is the, they have a quarter inch quilting foot and a one fifth quilting foot. You can see the difference in the circles there. Kind of cool. Then you have the open toe quilting foot. Then we have the blind hem foot there. We have a zipper foot that's adjustable back here because remember this is a straight stitch that needle isn't moving left or right. They give you the, um, what is this, like a specialized screwdriver, an exclusive screwdriver that will probably undo your plate screws and also your bobbin. And then we have some needles, and it also came with a cover for this machine and a little brush to poke and clean the things with. Look at that. That's a lot of feet. It comes with one, two, three, four five six seven eight different feet that's kind of awesome kind of amazing it comes with three extra bobbins and it also came with this um this screwdriver i should also say that it comes with a um a table that goes around your sewing machine base and it also comes with your foot the hip that presses that lifts the um that little knee lever i should say it's not a hip lever it's a knee lever for people who are sitting and then it has a stopper for the switch if you don't want to be able to use that thread cutting option on the foot pedal and then of course the cords and i said three extra bobbins there's one bobbin in the actual machine and i think that covers everything that comes with the machine which is a lot